This clip is courtesy of the Fright the Kids subreddit, or I think, yeah, the Fright the Kids subreddit, and it's taken from uh, Shane Gillis's podcast called, I think, Secret Time, I think, or something like that. I forgot the name of it, but they had Louis C.K. on as a guest, which is really cool. I need to actually listen to it. I haven't listened to it yet, but essentially the the the, the podcast episode is about presidents, like old presidents, because I guess they have knowledge of presidents or some shit. So it's a really cool spin on stuff, not to speak to Louis C.K. about council culture or anything nonsense like that, just to kind of get a really kind of interesting podcast and topic out of him. And obviously he's sitting in this amazing house, which I've read online that he's got many, many amazing houses, Louis C.K., so big up to him. But his house looks fucking incredible. It's like in the middle of the woods somewhere, flipping cool. But he's got this clip that, that sorry, this clip is taken from the podcast where he says something that I think could re be related to Brendan in terms of not being able to, you know, laugh at yourself. Um, and I think this really, really rings true to maybe part of the reason why Brendan isn't maybe as well liked online as he probably should be considering, you know, he got brought in with Rogan and whatnot. But hey, let's play the clip. To be made fun of is a place of strength. If you're too, if you, I can't take you seriously unless you don't take yourself seriously. If you're a person to be taken seriously, then you can be made fun. If you can't be made fun of, you can't be taken seriously. If you're like, do not make that joke about me. It's like, you're a pussy. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. have no fucking, you have no confidence in yourself. You need to hear good about you all the time. That is a mental and emotional problem. Exactly. And also as a comedian, it just doesn't make any sense. How can you be a professional comedian and you don't, like, I would imagine the first thing about being a professional comedian, I would imagine, especially if you want to, you know, take it seriously and start doing it as a career and stuff, you have to kind of do some self inventory and maybe pull apart all of the things about your personality that could be ridiculed and poked fun at. You have to be the master of like self deprecation. You have to know everything about you that people can product so that if they do say something to you, it never will affect you. Or if you do want to write good material, you, you have a place to kind of pull from. Do you know what I mean? That's maybe somewhat painful, whatever it may be, but you can make something out of it. But it doesn't seem to be something that Brendan seems to like or want to do, which I don't really understand. But it might, it might have to do. So um, it might have to do with the fact that Brendan comes from a um, athletic background and he's never really been a class clown. That might be part of the reason, because I would imagine any career in the entertainment or in the arts is probably hard to begin in your mid thirties. But trying to do stand up is probably way harder because, you know, it takes long to get good. And also you have to be really open and down to ridicule being, you know, bombing on stage, writing terrible jokes, not being taken seriously, not selling tickets. All this sort of stuff is going to be playing in you whilst you're trying to also get good at your craft, which you can't do, you know, alone at home like you know learning an instrument playing the guitar learning how to dj all these kind of things singing and rapping whatever you can just do in a studio on your own and then put out a track and people can like it or not but comedy you have to always do it in front of people so you kind of have to you know come from that place of humility or whatever it may be and he's never had to do that and also maybe being the way he is and looking the way he is he's never had to rely on being funny either so how do you just how do you suddenly become funny and being funny in the podcast is not as, not the same as performing on stage either, is it? Being a showman or whatever it may be, because you've never had to have that be a part of your personality. So now you're developing it at 30 years of age. It'd be very difficult, wouldn't it? I'd imagine it'd be as difficult as somebody who can't, who has no rhythm trying to learn how to dance. It's one thing if you have some rhythm, but if you have zero and you want to learn how to dance, it's going to be really, really difficult to do similar to like not having a funny bone in your body and then suddenly having to be like okay i'm funny man now which is why i've always said i don't know why he even does stand up i will, if if i was him i would just double down on doing kind of t fat k live things where like you have little brows and chin going and rapping and singing before the show you have maybe a couple of openers and you do like a kind of a sort of performance storytelling sort of thing similar to what he did at the um, ari shafir show and maybe you do several stories in your history that are really funny that maybe illustrate your kind of rise and fall, whatever it may be. And you do that as like a kind of touring show and maybe you tweak the material here and there, but that'd be pretty cool to do. I reckon going forward. And then you wouldn't be a stand up. You'd be in your own little lane. You have your own little thing going on, this live show thing. And you're into music, you're into trainers. Maybe you have, you know, something else with that tied into it. I don't know. That would be make much more sense, but 
you know, you can't tell people what to do with their careers in it. So if you want to do it, fair enough, and people are willing to pay, then I guess it is what it is. This next clip is always absolutely hilarious. This is maybe tying into it. This is um a clip where I think this was during a pandemic. Was it during a pandemic? No, I don't think it was actually. Maybe it was during a pandemic. I forgot when. I do remember this podcast though. Brendan went on this random podcast, which he says he doesn't usually do, but he went on there and the topic of bombing came up. And for some reason, I guess maybe at that time, Louis CK's comments about bombing on stage being really important was still fresh. I don't know. But for some reason, Brendan referenced Louis CK and basically he said in this clip that he doesn't bomb, which is an incredible thing to say, really, because it's a weird flex. It's like, no one believes you. And also, why would you flex on something like that? That doesn't make you a better comic because you never bomb. But anyway, let's play the clip anyway. And you can, I'll give my opinions on the other side. Different, yeah. And depending on what market you're in, is it different? Yeah. But in general, I have a good idea how it's going to go tonight. You ever bomb so bad? Uh, you know, I, listen, Louis C.K., who's one of the greatest comics to ever do it, you know, he always had this thing, and I think a lot of young comics took this on. He goes, you got to bomb 10,000 times before you get good. Dude, listen, if you've ever sucked at anything 10,000 times before you got good at it, it might not be for you. It's just not for you, man. You lose 10,000 fights, and then you win one, you're like, oh, there we go. Now I'm going to start my career and just... So yeah, I, I really, I haven't to the point where it's like crickets when I'm getting booed. I've missed some jokes and be able to dug myself out, you know, but as far as like a complete bomb, you know, people walking out of the room, I haven't, man. Just cause I what a bizarre thing to say. What a bizarre thing to say. So somehow he looks at bombing as a negative thing when most people would look at it as a positive because you get your bombs out of the way quickly, hopefully, if you keep at it, you're probably going to get better along the way, right? Hopefully, that's a hope. But also, bomb should also inform you pretty quickly that maybe it isn't for you. Like how says, this probably isn't for you, Papa, right? Maybe that's also a good thing. But if you don't bomb at all and you just play in front of your own crowd and you only get laughs and applauses and whatnot, that is what might, some would argue, that is what would lead to a Gringo Papi special if you just keep playing for your crowd. Actually bombing in front of people might actually lead to good specials, might actually lead to maybe some development, which we haven't really seen from the guy. That's the only thing, you know, say what you want about him, think you're not funny or not, think he's not funny or not. But the really concerning thing he has to worry about, I think, is that from the time Showtime special was filmed, the You'd Be Surprised one, to the time that he's done the Gringo Pappy, it seems like there's been no real improvement. Because if that's... If that's what you've been working on for four or five years, that's really concerning. Because the improvement, I, I, like I said before, I put my, I put my my opinion out there. That I think um, you'd be surprised is way better than they didn't go happy for me personally. Um, I think Brendan was having way more fun doing You'd Be Surprised. He was at a way better place in his life. Um, it's obviously produced amazing. That whole thing they did before where he's doing like the kind of behind the uh, behind the mic kind of thing where he's doing the thing where talking about his career and stuff and you see his home and you see him working with his writers. I thought that was a really cool idea concept. Maybe it was wasted on him, but I thought that concept was pretty cool. Like they, they, they took from, from like the, the boxing side of things, the MMA side, where they show you the prep beforehand. That, that was really well done. And obviously the, the production of the, you know, the main special was sick. But I thought, honestly, that was way better. So if you've t taken five, four years to produce that one and you've gone to this and this is what you have, oof, maybe you should bomb. Maybe you should go out there and purposely try and do badly so that you can maybe learn from it and then get better because this guy isn't getting any better. Like, he really isn't. And maybe it's, again, it's test. Maybe it's not his fault. Maybe it's just his friends too. They're not telling him. But I don't think that's true either. I think they tell him and he doesn't listen. And if somebody doesn't listen to you, I think we all have friends like that, guys who are like pig-headed or stubborn or don't take criticism well. If they're your friends, you just don't bring it up again because you don't want to cause a fight. You don't want to cause an argument because you like them. They're your friends. So you're just like, oh, all right, whatever. You just keep it moving. So I think people have done that. And also the other caveat or, or the other kind of thing to consider, Brendan's the, the guy. I mean, he's the one that pays everyone. He's the important person. So you're not going to, you know, pull him to the side and tell him what's what all the time if he's paying you. I mean, you kind of have to play a position like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I do what I want, I pay you. So he kind of pays people's silence. And of course, the Joe Rogan Association too limits the amount of 
you know, honestly that he gets his way. It's a very strange place to be. Really, really strange. You should be, you should be open and, you know, somewhat transparent and whatnot and easy to talk to when it comes to this sort of stuff so that he can learn and he can develop but maybe that's just not the way that he wants to do things in it which is understandable but I just find it very very um interesting and weird but yeah we digress we continue 